these rocks are receiving a 360 degree application of the fiber reinforced cement at three quarters of an inch thickness. These are some good sized rocks, like about four foot. The, the width of the plywood should indicate to you it's a four foot. It's about three foot wide, two and a half foot down to, you know, 18 inches. Some of the rocks are three feet tall. It's getting ready after lunch to start mudding these. We just made sure that all the seams were taped. All screws were identified as being placed where needed. This is Stuart's first rocks that he made and they're just gorgeous. In the rough, in the form, they are taking the shape that we need just to skin them. We won't need to put definition mud to get the formation to look realistic. This rock is just beautiful. It's a 3D rock. Some of these two are flat bottom. That one's flat bottom. They're gonna go in the gravel. All those are flat bottom, but this one really, I mean, it's upside down right now. That is actually the bottom, but it's really a 3D rock out of cardboard. It's just beautiful. Okay, we did, um, we, we critiqued all these rocks. Because when I came here, like this rock, he had done some taping, he had done some screwing, but some of the screwing was not enough. And I'm just gonna point out what I believe. You should have a frequency along the perimeter, like here, this is, see how I can get mud underneath there? And we don't want that. We wanna screw this, depending on the piece, three every four inches it, it, it varies but you want to get it to where it's down this is okay but like here you can see this and we do use the tape the tape is more designed for this rock right here this area there's an elevation change between these two and when you put a piece of tape there's no way mud can get underneath there and with the tape you create a skin an outer garment that is continuous without elevation change things like this are going to eat up more mud there's more finance we don't need mud in there we just need a three-quarter inch layer of mud over the top so we spent time today screwing more frequently and taping every seam um uh, one thing we did after we had taped these was we sprayed this you see the video of us spraying it here with the uh, glue uh, which is going to give it a seal so water can't from the mud can't inundate the cardboard wet cardboard loses its rigidity and can sag and we don't want that. So here on these two, we didn't finalize our critique on them, but you can see what I'm after here. Look, we're gonna get mud in here. We need to tape that or put a piece of cardboard over it to where it doesn't have that. Again, these types of things, you've got tape being used to try and seam two pieces together and you're never gonna do it. This needs to be screwed. The tape is really for areas like this. That's really, it's kind of screwed down okay. I can barely get my finger in there. And that's where the tape comes in. It's not capable of joining together, successfully joining pieces of, this has got the tape and you can see the gap there and it's still flimsy. Screws are the kid, uh, the, uh, the thing you need. And again, uh, on this particular rock, it's kind of what he did was he used a bunch of small boxes and then started cloaking it with the, or cladding it with the cardboard. Um, in this particular example, we've got a hard evidence of a, forensically speaking, of a, of a box. We don't want to see that. So what I did earlier, I didn't do it to this one, but a lot of times you just take and you hit that with a hammer or something, you could round that. But at this point, I think we need to do a little surgery and cut that and reopen it up and get it to where it's not so box oriented. This one is just absolutely beautiful again. See that? That's looking great. It's got curvature around. It's not just vertically plumb. Like this little area is almost too vertical. It's too man-made. We need it to kind of taper and round as the granite normally does. If you're emulating the granite, now we can also make rock that's fractured. But in this case, we're emulating the granite and we're creating that roundish look. Okay, we're getting ready to cover this with three quarters of an inch of fiber reinforced mud. The bottom's not going to get any mesh, the top will. Let me have that, just to check this out. Again, when you're first starting out, it's not bad to have a gauge. And we're, uh, that's pretty good. And you can see over here we're not, but like right here, this should be really good. See that? Mm -hmm. That's a feel that you get. Mm -hmm. So again, plus or minus. Our, our, a lot of our castings are about five eighths you know to a half inch and okay this rock is four foot by three foot and then about two foot tall so we're giving it about three quarters of an inch again this is the bottom where we're going to mud the top later here in this video we're going to use mesh on the top which we didn't have to use in the bottom and this is the bottom of the rock but there was such a beautiful cantilever effect from the bottom that it would be physically impossible where we're laying these on the table and starting from the bottom going up we couldn't do that here because you're basically trying to add mud to this and that would not work. So we're mudding it right now, letting it sit for about an hour, then we'll flip it, then we'll mud the rest of it. Okay, just giving you a little close-up of this highly inundated fiber reinforced cement mix that we use to cover this. Again, you've all seen cardboard rocks that I'm using with regular mortar mix on my channel, but this is a very proprietary blend which I only give out to students that are paying to be trained by me. After we flipped this rock, we'd actually mudded it with the mesh, which you didn't see on camera, unfortunately. 
Okay, we're heading in now to making the uh, two other rocks cover them with the fiber reinforced cement. First, we're moving the rock out of the way. We've got a drawing of the base on the plastic, and now you're seeing us mud that base with an overage of about two inches all the way around it, which we'll later pull up on the side. So we're sticking it in there right now. You see the extra mud, and then you'll I'm I'm pulling it up on the sides right now while he removes the other one again we're going to mud underneath this one and again people we're shooting for three quarters i can i can make this even thinner with a formulation change but now just kind of coming up about four or five inches up on the side and again you just keep going around and around the mountain and building this thing from the bottom up and again this other side so we're just covering in lifts of about four maybe five inches up Okay, so I suppose one thing I should be going over is the possibility of having a sag or a collapse, which isn't going to happen on the vertical. But when you get into the horizontal, this is where if you haven't built a rock real good, you may have a collapse. But again, on these particular rocks, we didn't have it wasn't real wide it was longer but they're not really width the span is what we'd have to worry about and i didn't mesh these like i did the rock that's closest to you um, because there was no real span the fiber mud is plenty strong for everything we're doing here and again this is just a you know if all two of us get up on on those rocks the day after they were made we could jump up and down them and they wouldn't do nothing no breakage So you can see this little slag edge right here where this has been cut. You can start to see that's not desirable. Okay, so we've got our rocks uh, cut. The bottom edge is cut and he, we've blown everything off. And you could wash this, but our blow was all I did. We're putting the, re the bonding agent, which is the glue that we made the mud with, we're putting it on as a bonding agent, and we're about to splatter texture these two rocks. So we're going to load this brush by pushing it in. Oop. We're pretty thick. Let's okay. just play that. It's actually too thick. Okay. Uh, but a little bit of glue? You're always going to use the liquid that we mixed with, yes. And you know what I did? No, let's just play it. Let's just play it. Okay. Um, so I just threw back off. No, I didn't shake it. Uh -huh. I threw it back off in the bucket. Mm -hmm. That unloads it. Now you're the most loaded as you do this cycle. This is the most mud we have. So atomization is a further back. It's not like right here mm -hmm. initially, especially. And your throw is going to be less forceful. So it's just almost like a, a, a lot of people are using their arm as the, this action is par partially being used. The real ma magic of it is the wrist. It's a flick. Okay. Okay. You actually could keep your forearm, and but you do get a little bit by moving the arm elbow too, mm -hmm. but it is the wrist. And I'm gonna do a little and then you'll do some. So. What's nice about Okay, so we got the two rocks textured today. We worked on some staining, and we have some models over here that we've gotten from the lake. And these are the colors that we've worked on formulating. And we're gonna make, this is 15 models. We're gonna make at least three, color-wise, we're gonna make three of each of rocks, one of each of the models so that we get a variety. Uh, we only mudded, fully mudded the Three rocks, that one needs textured. This one's just half done, and then we're gonna flip it over and do the other. But right now, we've got the system down, and we are complete with this training session. And if you need anything, you guys give me a call. Call me on the description area, phone number, email. Thank